my gosh. I love that I am finally getting back to my pregnancy vlog flow eight weeks later. No wait, nine weeks later. My last one was vlog 29 and I'm now 38 weeks pregnant. So basically what happened was I was planning my first women's conference called Crowned and so I kind of just checked out of everything. every other part of my life. Yeah, so everything from my blog to being a good wife. Chris really stepped up and was an amazing husband during that time. But anyway, so basically I didn't get to film any of my pregnancy vlogs, which makes me sad because I like to go back and watch them just to document pregnancy because I've started hearing that once the baby comes, you, you forget, won't remember you anything. forget being pregnant and that it's like this whole blur and you're like, was I ever pregnant? Because being a mom just completely takes over your life. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to feel that way. And it's been crazy. Hey, since this is not only for everyone who's watching, but this is for us too. Yeah. I think because for the inner, longest inner time, baby. yeah, okay. you couldn't even see that, you know, my wife had, you know, was pregnant or she was having, carrying a baby. I think you should stand up and show them right now. Okay. Your little, your baby bump. Yeah, because I haven't really done this yet. So, this is my bump at nine and a half months. Hello. Nine and a half months mm. and 38 weeks. Hello, sweetie pie. So, mm. yeah. I talk to our daughter all the time. She knows who I am. She is the best. She knows my voice. I read her stories. We pray for her. So, we're just... We're ready for her to come. We're very doting parents. Like, we're kind of obsessed with her, even in the womb, so I can't imagine what we're gonna be like when we actually get to hold her. Look at her beautiful little eyes. Yeah. The one problem, though, is that everybody's saying, like, you should get your sleep before the baby comes. And, and we're like, that really hmm, hasn't been happening. What world in fact, I don't know if you can tell here, but I have a sty in my eye. And it's just because I've been exhausted and we've been going to bed so late and I've been just working on putting together random stuff like baby swing sets and and uh, uh, baby, baby shelves. Baby swing sets, baby shelves, changing table. Well, I guess my mom and sister did that. Yeah. But cleaning stuff, we got, getting ready together. We got all the walls. Getting rid of stuff. We got all the walls painted in our house. So what we didn't like blue. what we didn't really think about was that we are going to have to remount everything. Everything. On Putting the walls. up the new mirror, the mirrors. And you know, when they repaint, they go over all of your old holes. So we've had to get out the stud finder and that little balancer thing to make sure everything is straight. And literally every single night is like a new, a new project. Yeah. And the most recent one that we finished up was actually, they were actually floating shelves. And Kristen wanted to have extra storage for our child. And so I, she ordered it and it came from Walmart. So, you know, I thought like, hey, this should be easy to put together. Well, needless to say, I would say the Walmart directions were um, less detailed <laughs> than even Ikea. It was like another language. It, I mean, it wasn't even in a language. It was just like pictures and it just had like lines and, uh, you know, just stick here. And, and you Chris, couldn't even tell what was going on. And don't think Chris is dumb because he actually has a genius IQ level. So if someone like Chris is having a hard time, imagine like it's just me not my doing it by know, myself. It just might not be my strength area, but it took a little bit to put together. Not too long, but the longest part actually was putting it up afterwards. So we started it pretty late. We got done around 1:30. Well, we fit, well, we finished like assembling it at 12:30, and then we decided that it was a great idea, no, especially for all of our neighbors was, you around us. Decided it was a great idea. I advised you against. Yeah, it. she advised me against this, but like I just feel like once you start a project, you gotta like. Plow just through. push through and you got to finish it up. So I, we're like finished. I was like, we're finishing this. So 1230, I decided to go ahead and drill holes in the walls. And you know, I don't, we live in a condo, so I don't think probably our neighbors appreciated that. But yeah, we, uh, we drilled that sucker in and then, uh, and it felt really good. Um, but, th but then it didn't like quite fit into place well. And then we got up in the morning and it, so in like P Diddy. Yeah, <laughs> and the shelf looked like it was feeling like P. Diddy because it was basically coming out, out of the, the wall. wall. Needless to say, like the stud finders, I missed them by the studs. Using the stud finder, I still missed it by like a centimeter. centimeter. So. Yeah. But yeah. thanks to Ian, which Kenzie's boyfriend, he, because um, I had to go to work, 
on, on little to no sleep. And then he came over and he found the issue and took care of it, came home, and there are floating white shelves in our room now. Yeah. So basically a point that I would like to bring up and address is the phenomenon of nesting. Because when I hear the word nesting, to me that sounds, sounds very like, doo, 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 doo. yeah, it sounds very like, cute really nice. and cozy and like oh, I get to just mm, organize things and snuggle in my home and be cute. Here's my interpretation of nesting. No, I just want to break down nesting. First of all, it starts with a change in your hormones that makes you th see everything around you as like balls of trash and clutter and all you want to do me. is take it out and get no. rid of it and throw it away like i was looking around my house and all of a sudden one day it hit me and i was just like oh my god i want to get rid of everything everything like one night like she literally wanted to get I rid of like were, books that you couldn't even really tell were on the shelf because they were like <sighs> things that i thought were cute that were sparkly like totally me I had like major disdain for and i wanted to get rid of it so i mean i just started like bundling up stuff like I would see something and be like that's going in the trash that's going in to goodwill most of it was mine <laughs> but a lot of it was mine too but it starts with like this internal like itching and urge and then and then it begins to froth over like you have you have been cooking the rice or macaroni too long but that was easy getting rid of things is easy but then you start seeing more major stuff like the rug that we've had for four years now. Which this rug I'm looking that at. That we've never I seen clean. Four hours and with the all rug of doctor. All of a sudden, I was like, this rug is disgusting and we can't get it steam cleaned fast enough. It kind of was disgusting though. So, we got the rug doctor, Chris, poor thing. I was like, it's oh, like it'll take an hour. Four years of men's groups and women's groups and. Yes, four years of lots of people in our house and whatever. So, we cleaned that. I mean, I uncovered the couches. Like took all of the you know fabric off, washed them. I mean things that I like don't do. And then she decided she was like, I have to have a recliner. Then I needed to have a recliner. But it couldn't just be any recliner. No. It had to swi oh, swivel. You just yeah. A swivel glider. It had recliner. a swivel glide recline. And, and it do all of those in yeah. one. And it's really hard to find one that have has all three of those features that a aren't a million dollars and B aren't ugly. But but I'll tell you what, Kristen prayed about it and God came through in the it's form true. of Ashley Furniture. It is true. So one night, it was like last it was last Friday, I was like, Chris, we need to get a re recliner because it was I think wait, And she was, was like, right now. Yeah, I was thirty seven weeks at that point and I thought the baby was gonna come. You know, it's kinda weird because we keep on thinking that if we get like little tasks done that the baby will want to come. That she'll feel yeah. like peaceful. Recliner's like, oh, here. Time to come like out. I'm ready now. Like my parents are ready ready for me now. Now. Oh I my gosh, come. mom and dad put the white shelves up. Time to come out. Yeah. It doesn't really happen that so way. So we keep like trying to do things, thinking she'll feel relieved. But we're very like you know performance oriented. That's like kind of our woundings from her, her past. So, yeah. you know, we kind of feel like if you check this off and you check this off, then like, you know. We're like, did you see that? Are yeah. you happy now? Come on out now. Do you feel good? We're already like subject to her performance. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're already like She ain't even here yet. Us. And we're already like trying to perform for our daughter. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So last Friday night, we totally thought she was going to come. But I was like, she's mm. not going to come till I have the recliner to rock her and nurse her in. So I was like, dear Lord, we please like... Get at this moment. Because also, Chris and I were major dilly dalliers and we don't allow ourselves that much time. We always put ourselves in situations where we're in a rush. I'd like to think of it that we're optimist with our time. You are an optimist with yeah. your time. And it's crazy how you're 41 years old and you are still optimistic with yeah. your time. I saw this great meme and it's, a, it's specifically about people in LA. It's like, I'm sorry that I was late because of traffic. And I left at the time that we were supposed to meet, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> which is about right. <laughs> yeah, that's us. So, uh, so we were on our way, and we actually didn't know where where we were gonna go. We didn't, we didn't even have a plan of action. Mm -mm. Um, but I was like, dear Lord, can you please just like have the recliner for me, the swivel glider recliner, and make it look cute, and have it in our budget, please? And my Bible study had actually gifted me with a gift card to use 
for a recliner. And let me tell you that baby stuff is expensive. No matter everything, it doesn't no matter, matter what it was. No matter how many baby showers you have or how many friends you have that give you stuff, it's all expensive still, and difficult to put together. Yeah, and you have to get all, you really have to get most of the major stuff. Like we had to get the new furniture and blah, 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 blah. so every little bit counts. And so I was like, Lord, I really don't want to spend any more than what's on this gift card. And we the Lord totally blessed us. We went in the store. There was like a buy one, get one free special on recliners. Like who bought? Anyways. And, and I was a little bit terrified from that because Kristen was thinking like, she's like, oh, I could have a recliner in the living room and in the room. And this is keep in mind at the same time that she's telling me that we need to get rid of stuff. So I'm thinking this doesn't like compute. But Chris, but getting rid of stuff, y'all know girls, we're talking about we're talking about tchotchke type stuff and like riff raff. We're not, but recliners, I mean, that's like a major piece of furniture. So it's not the same thing. And I'm thinking like a recliner takes up half the room when it's And I'm down. thinking that trash and lots of papers that haven't been organized for the last three years takes up more space. So <laughs> the salesperson said, we're having a buy one, get one free special on recliners. And I was like, is there any way we can just get one for half off? And he totally... Yeah, he wasn't going to. to he hooked it up. He hooked it up. And so I was able to get our recliner with the amount that was on the gift card. Almost with perfectly. Some, with some money left over. That's now, when you say, that is an that's answer. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. That's an answer from the Lord. It has the glider, swivel, recliner, all the aspects to it. Yeah. It's not that cute, though. But it's okay. It's, it's better than some of the other options. I'm looking at it right now, and... I mean, is it, there's such a thing as a it's good looking right. recliner? I don't know. I haven't seen one yet. Oh, well, An it's comfy recliner. and it's functional. And that's when you know you're becoming a mom. Yeah. Because young people don't be like, Hey, let's go get a recliner. You know, it's like, <laughs> I think that's like, you're, we're ready for the next stage in life because we purchased a recliner. Yeah. I must be really mature and. And Not eventually we'll be, we'll be just like my grandparents and we'll both have side by side recliners and we'll lay back in them while we're watching Sunday TV, hold I don't hands think there's and anything wrong with snooze that. for a good few hours. I think that sounds like dream. That's life. next up on the menu. Mm. So, anything else? No. I All right. So. Basically, I just have to tell you since this is my last vlog and it's mainly for. She might myself. have the baby tonight. It's We're actually hoping so. It's mainly for myself to go back and watch and be able to remember all of this crazaziness. Both of us. And my baby girl. And for us to know how much we loved. For her to know how much we loved her and how much we did for her. Yes. <laughs> Before she got here. Before she got um, here. This is something else that I just want to point this out. This is for you. And that daughter. is that I have been in false labor for three weeks. Pre-laboring for three weeks. At nighttime, I have full-on contractions all night, and no baby. <laughs> no baby yet. So, and, and none of my friends have experienced this at all, which is confusing. You know, they're all like, "What are you talking about?" Like, I never even had contractions until I was in real labor. So, I just want to let you know, girls who have never been pregnant or thinking about being pregnant or in the earlier phases of pregnancy, that wow. I mean, there are. It just happens different for everyone. Some things you can't find on Google. I have this weird burning sensation like below my sternum, just on my skin. It feels like, feels like someone is actually burning my skin with fire. And there's and no- And she acts like it too. And there's no explanation. It's like she's getting branded. There's no explanation for it. Everything strange that happens, I tell my doctor and he's like, good. Sounds like you're pregnant. And I'm like- He just goes and tell you have Contractions at every, once every four minutes, don't need to worry about anything. Yeah, so we've had so many indicators and signs to uh, that would show that we're about to have her, but then nothing happens. So we're just thinking that the Lord wants to teach us a lot about patience before she gets here. Yeah. <sighs> well, thanks for watching this, and our daughter will be watching it, and we'll be watching it too. So thanks for partaking in our little project Pregnancy for a baby vlog, girl. vlog, week 38. Yes. Nine weeks apart from my last one.
hopefully that was a good summary. I'm, I know I'm missing like so much, but. We might tune in and do another one. It's okay. Maybe, maybe she'll just end up being post-term and coming at 41 or 42 weeks. And then we, we can do a few more pregnancy vlogs after this. But let's pray that's not the case. Yes. All right, y'all. We love you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And we're totally going to try to do a labor and delivery vlog. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that happens. So look out for look it. Look out for that. Okay, bye. Bye.